Now let's join Wade and Michael out in the field as they show us their process when picking a location for a feeder and how they set it up to get maximum results. Part of the, the fun thing about having a piece of property that you lease or that you own or you've got access to hunt is being able to go out and, and work it and manage it and build a, build a program around it. Uh, where we hunt a lot in Texas, we have to deal with livestock, cattle, sheep, and then, you know, the invasive species like the pigs getting into the area. So if we want to have a free choice type of a feeding program where we're doing supplemental feed, we've got to build pens. And uh, so what we're doing right now is trying to find a pen area, as we would call it, where we could put uh, both a free choice feeder where we'll put some record rack, either golden nuggets or our, you know, just a traditional protein pellet. And then eventually we'll put a timer feeder in there and, and we'll have it in an area that we won't necessarily be looking at from a hunting area, uh, but we'll have it as an area that kind of keeps deer in, keeps them in good shape in all times of the year. Um, I'm a big believer in a, a feeding program that you can operate 12 months out of the year. Uh, not just the times that you're hunting, um, not just right before hunting season, but I want to provide some type of nutrition, some type of enhancement all year long. Uh, you know, we may adjust our feed rates, we may even adjust what we're, we're providing for the deer at differing times, but all of that adds up to, you know, a healthier herd, uh, gives the deer more nutrition, more minerals, which could, could allow them to have bigger antlers, which we all like when we're hunting, uh, puts a lot more weight on them. Uh, as well, but it also provides uh, supplemental feed during those stressful times that we can't control where the weather and mother nature changes things and it could be an extreme drought uh, where all the native forbs are gone and there's nothing for them to forage on and so they'll really hit your feeding programs really hard then or it, it, it could be you know prior to the rut just after the rut when you're wanting to bulk them up you're wanting to help recover real quick so you know when I'm asked a lot of times about when and where it's 12 months out of the year 24 hours a day provide something for them and at the end of the day I just want to provide it to the wild game so we're going to fence this off and we'll see what we do and you can kind of watch it go down. You know our concept here is to create something that obviously will keep the undesirables out like the pigs, the cattle, uh, sheep that get into the, some of these pastures. We're going to use a portable uh, boss buck, non-typical free choice feeder. You know, basically we can stand and fill this on our own. We don't need ladders. We can ease up here, pour it in, anchor it down. The deer can come and eat uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's, you know, man-made food plot, for lack of a better word, without, you know, bringing in everything else around it. Good shady area, good comfortable area. Once you get something like this all built, I mean, you can just imagine the possibilities for Every time you go home, I mean, that's how I am. I'm always dreaming about what's what's coming in, what's happening. Uh, the stealth cams will tell me a lot, but, you know, nothing like sitting in a stand and seeing what direction they finally come in from. We're going to mix it up to get them acclimated. We're going to throw some golden nuggets in, which is kind of a hybrid corn protein mix. It's still got good minerals and protein in it, and then we'll put traditional what you would call a protein pellet in. It just kind of really helps your game management program, I think, get kicked off. You know, a lot of times we'll put this in with some of our corn and our timer feeders. Let's open the buffet. One final piece to the menu in here. 30 pound record rack deer block. It even smells so good I'd eat it. Michael's already ate it. I think those blocks being a little bit softer might help you out a little bit. I do too. It's I, not as hard. Yeah. It's not, you know, you can tell when they've come and eaten on yes. this thing whether, yeah. you know, it's just. I mean, you can look at the inside of it. I mean, who wants to, you think about a big old jawbreaker when you were a kid. You know, you'd get in there and start chewing on that thing. I mean, it tasted good, yeah. but you, it just was hard to. And you, know, you get in here if you're a deer. He's going to get something when he comes to you. He's going to get some of that. I mean, you look at all the corn built in there and all, all the tray stuff. I mean, not only is it. Nutritious, it'll be good for them. I just. And it's got a good smell too. It doesn't yeah, smell yeah. like the regular protein that no. you would get from a feed store. I just, I totally agree with you. Them hard, those hard blocks, I just, I wouldn't want to chew on them. No. 